Oh, wow. That looks pretty darn cool. Are you tired of cheap components like this extruder? Ugh. Look at what it does to your poor fingers. Ugh. Bruising. Anybody else's fingers hurt? Are you also tired of seeing the carnage left behind from your filament being extruded? Then just possibly rubbing against your Z? Getting all lubricated? Hmm. Hey, that's so sad. Once again, Microsoft has you covered with the all new direct drive called the NG. Yeah pretty sweet. This is a all metal hot end direct drive. Comes with everything you need in the box to get you going. It's lightweight, 3 to 1 gear reduction, adjustable wide range of printers from the CR10 series and under 3 series up to the V2. Uh, pretty darn sweet. And uh, we'll go what's in the box a little bit later in the video. Well, what's this? Again? I'm doing another Microsoft review and it's sold out. Just click on notify when available. Link is in the description below. Let's continue on to the review, shall we? Yes, I need to remind people. Please turn off the power. Once you've done that, unplug it. I have to always remind people. And here we have it, the Microsoft NG Direct Drive Extruder. What's in the box, dude? It's a surprise. And what's in the box? step-by-step -step instructions okay we have a bag of screws with some Loctite on it eccentric nut and a lock nut next we have a tool bag with a spanner wrench some self-tapping screws an allen wrench and some spacers here we have the hot end with a screw to hold your thermistor in place and silicon sock. And next we have the extension for your east stepper driver. Last but not least, we have the whole assembly. Oh, what's this? LDO motors, nice. Very high quality motor. It's a pancake stepper motor. And this is a 3D printed fan duct, and it's dual cooling. Nice. And uh, looks to be very nicely done. And it uses your existing part cooler, and it has the uh, all metal hot end, so that's very nice to see it as well. And it has a uh, 3 to 1 gear reduction with uh, dual gears. Very powerful. Push that filament through. Now let's go ahead and disassemble. Yes, we are going to take apart basically this everything. <laughs> uh, so this has the CR touch on it and I'm going to go ahead and remove the bracket. You may have a different leveling system on here, but uh, yeah, screws are flying everywhere. Always happens to me. So we're going to just go ahead and push that out of the way. Now we're going to also loosen our belt. I already loosened the other screw. And I'm having a real problem with this hot end. This is a new one too. And so I'm just taking the coupler off and uh, I heated it up at first, tried yanking on it, that didn't help. And last resort, try doing it this way and pull. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, it was barely ever used. Next, we're gonna go ahead and take off the hot end. It just takes two screws. And we are not gonna be using any of these screws here. I know, it's wasteful. But uh, we are going to be using these free rollers off of here and just loosen the bottom one and take it off and uh, remove the belt pretty straightforward and we are going to just finish removing these V rollers now you're going to have a lot of extra parts later and it may it may seem wasteful but if you have another 3d printer well you got spare parts now for lots of things so I would still just hold on to them. Uh, I've done IT for a living and um, tend to hold on to lots of stuff. 
now that's all disassembled, we're gonna also take the fan shroud off here. Just takes two little screws to remove. And man, you can really see how nice this thing looks. Really w well milled out. Uh, it's a shame that it's all covered by that uh, fan shroud. And this is your lever to feed your filament through and do the tension. Man, just looks amazing. But let's continue on. <laughs> Done drooling for right now. Now you're gonna take your bag of screws. It has two screws have already have Loctite on it. You just screw those to the top here. I just start out by basically making them thumb tight. And we are going to just put the two top ones on. After we are done making them thumb tight, we're gonna just crank them down. Now, of course, not too much because we are going into aluminum. It's a softer alloy and it can easily strip out. So just make them nice and snug, no reason to do any more. And of course you can just do the roll test. There are our bearings, so you should be good to go. Next, we're gonna put the bottom one on very loosely. And we're gonna just put this screw with no Loctite on. And you'll see that one end of this eccentric nut it has a little bit thicker of a lip on it. And that goes in first. We're gonna turn it over to its side and we're going to then put the washer on and then we're going to put the lock nut on and we're just going to do this thumb tight no reason to do it any more than that and that's it nice and loose that's how we want it loosey goosey now we're going to go ahead and put it back on the rail here and we're going to just slightly tighten this and just make it not too snug but where it is just kind of flopping on here a little bit don't worry about this yet because what we're gonna do is now tighten this or twist this eccentric nut on the bottom and that's gonna kind of pivot your V roller on the bottom upwards and you can see it's a little sticky here and that's what you don't want so we're gonna loosen it a little bit and you want it to glide nicely just like that next we're going to put the belt on each side here and you want to just make sure it's at the end Right where that brass fitting is and you're going to do it to the other end use the first notch well depending on which machine you're using next i'm going to tension the belt i'm going to take my spanner wrench here and i'm going to just tighten down both of the screws and check the belt for if it's taut now we're going to focus on this hot end we're going to just take off your silk and sock <laughs> bet your your hot end isn't as clean as this one and we're going to remove the grub screw here this way we could remove the heater cartridge and we also going to loosen or taking off this uh, screw for the thermistor and you just pull both out nice and gently next we're going to remove the four screws that hold the part cooler in place and just dump them wherever you feel like it i guess and now we're going to remove the four screws that hold this other fan in place for your hot end next we're going to take out the heater block and we're going to remove this silicone sock. The nozzles are already pre-installed on here. And we're going to just loosen these two grub screws. They're actually pretty loose from the factory. Next, we're going to install the heater cartridge. Tighten down the these grub screws just a little bit. Not too much right now. We're going to come back to this two more times. Then we're going to put our thermistor wire in and just gently 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 did i say gently yes we do not want over tightness just a little snug careful pinky not too tight and now we're going to come back and tighten down these grub screws one more time and we're going to tighten them down again once we have this heated up go ahead and push the heater block into place while pushing it up tighten down the grub screw to hold it in place now i do have the cr touch and um Microsoft was kindly enough to um, make some files for us. There's STLs on their website to print ahead. Oh, and yes, we are actually going to reuse some screws. Sorry about that. We're going to just reuse the CR Touch screws, two short ones and a hold it in place, and the two longer ones secure the CR Touch in place. Now we're going to turn on the printer, heat it the hot end to 200 degrees, put our adjustable wrench over the heater block, and give the hot end a nice tug. And just to be sure, we are gonna now um, tighten down 
the two grub screws that hold the heater cartridge in place. Again, don't, do not uh, over tighten and please be careful. It is really hot. And then we're just going to tighten down that grub screw for the heater block. Turn off the printer, let it cool down. Make sure it's nice and cool. And we're gonna put the silicone sock on. The right rear may need a little bit more love to get it in place. Next, we're going to install the coolers. So for your hot end, you wanna make sure the label is facing inward. And we're going to use the four longer screws to hold this fan in place. They're gonna self tap into this cooler assembly. And again, just do not overdo it because you don't need that much force to hold this in place. You have to self tap. Next, we're gonna take the smaller screws to secure the part cooler in place. And just make sure the orientation is pointed down into the duct. And just like the hot end fan, self tap it in and don't go nuts with uh, securing it down. Just a little snug will do. Once that's done, we're gonna just now secure it with the two screws. That's all it takes to put this whole assembly back on. And finally, we could get rid of this piece of awesomeness that's in the back. Uh, just go ahead and take everything off. You don't need this anymore. Believe it or not, the NG weighs considerably less than this whole assembly. Now we're gonna take our custom extension cable, plug it into where our stepper motor used to be, and plug the other end into our Pancake LDO stepper. Now we're gonna reuse some of our PTFE tube. If you have one of these cutters, it'll make it a little bit easier. If not, just get a really sharp X-Acto knife. We're gonna cut off uh, maybe about three, maybe four inches of tubing off. And this will be our filming guide into the NG. We're gonna then just push it in there as far down as it will go, just nice and firmly. And then we're gonna take one of these retaining clips and just shove it underneath. That way it doesn't back out on its own. And that's it. And of course, we're gonna just go ahead and cut our uh, filament on a 45 degree angle. That's pretty important for this. And, yep, nice 45. We're gonna straighten out a little bit. That way it can just go pretty much straight down in there. Insert the filament into the PTFE tube. And then you're just gonna push on the lever and go down. And that's it. Filament's now nice and loaded. Now we have to set the E-steps on our extruder. We go to configuration, advanced configuration, and we go to steps per millimeter, and you can change it here on the E-steps. We would need to change this to 400. Now, not all your firmware will have this feature, and if we do, this is a quick and easy way to do it. We would just go ahead and eventually get to 400, click it, then what we're gonna do is then save it. And that would be it. And store settings. Now, if your printer doesn't have these advanced configurations, we'll need to go ahead and load up Pronterface. Connect to your printer. And then what we're gonna do is do a M92 command. And we see that our E-steps is at 95. Then what we'll do is then do a E400, M92, E400. We're gonna then hit enter and that will send that command to change the value to E400. Then what we'll do is just back it off and do a M92, make sure it says E400, which it now does. And then we're gonna save it by doing an M500 command. And that's it, you're all done. Now let's test some prints.
Uh, you gotta love TH3D Easy Flex build plates. This is the Clock Spring Rift Bowl, done in Polymaker 3D filament. It is their Silk Blue. I have to say, this came out really nice. Um, you have to set your retraction at uh, 0.8 or 0.9, and it's filament retraction speed of 35. And that's basically what I did for all of these. And we got the standard Benchy. Uh, I don't know what happened around that top top layer. It's got a little bit of over extrusion, but overall, Benchy is pretty solid. You can even make out the wording on the back. It's pretty much a first for me, but still, overall, solid Benchy. Not bad at all. And the A cube, calibration cube. All the edges are nice and crisp. And this is all these are printed at 0.12 layer height. Yep, can't complain about this. Looks pretty darn nice too. And then I just used a TPU here. I'll put the link in the bottom. And uh, same speed. So all these were done at a 60 millimeter speed per second. And I can't really squish it. This was still with 10% infill. Yeah, a little bit still too solid, but. CPU, no problem. I actually think this came out better than the PLA to, uh, cube. But overall, very impressed with this NG. I also switched out uh, a different screen while I was actually doing this video, and I made this mount. Well, didn't make it, I printed it. It's from B BTT. Came out real nice as well. Now, this is how I routed the cables, and I'm not real big fan of how it looks. And it just seems a little bit all over the place, and I left the zip ties the way they were for a reason. I thought about changing the way I did it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove these zip ties, and we're gonna do a little bit, something a little bit different. I have this PTFE tube from, you know, scrap, I guess. And I'm going to just push it in the sleeve here. What this will allow me to do is um, keep this from flopping around. I'll go ahead and push this in as far as it'll go. And what I'm going to do next is uh, I'm going to wrap it. And what am I going to wrap it with? Well, link will be in the description below. This is wire harness wrap for your car. It's really nice tape. It almost reminds me like a like a gaffer's tape, and I'm just gonna wrap it all around. And we're just gonna do a little piece at the bottom, so just make it look a little bit better. I think not only does this add a little bit more form and function to it, but it also looks better too. And you can use that tube for something else now. A few things to keep in mind with this NG Direct Drive. It is an all metal hot end, so you may have to print uh, about 10 degrees hotter than usual. Also, this does not have a, like, a gear in the front to help feed your filament. So you may have to pay extra close attention to something like that. I do highly recommend this. This is one of the best direct drive units that I've ever had the pleasure of reviewing. And if you're looking to purchase this, the link will be down below for your convenience. I really appreciate you tuning in to Tripod's Garage. Please have a wonderful day, evening, or weekend, or whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning in to Tripod's Garage.